I'm Greg Alvarado, and today we're going to talk about the inspection effectiveness tables in API RP581 and the importance of those tables and how you should view those tables. First of all, as a member of the API 581 working group and having been an inspection subcommittee member at API since uh, 1987. I think it's important to be very accurate about this and, and what we're talking about. So if you've known anything about RBI or listened to any of these other podcasts, uh, you understand that RBI is a lot about uh, using uncertainty and confidence to understand risk and manage risk. And of course, then we need to understand uncertainty and confidence. So one of the ways the 581 methodology uses that for inspection is to understand what the probability is that we will detect the damage that we're looking for. So one of the keys to a good RBI program is doing a good damage mechanisms review. So we want to make sure competent people are reviewing the equipment and anticipating, predicting what type of damage you would expect in those different areas. And they may do that based on experience, industry data, past inspection histories, thermodynamics, you know, simple chemistry, metallurgy, and so forth. Um, so once we know what kind of damage to look for, then we also need to understand a little bit about what the sensitivity of the NDE techniques or the inspection techniques we are using, what the capabilities of those are and how sensitive they need to be to find that damage so that it doesn't go critical between inspections and cause a leak or cause a failure. So in the API 581 document, there are various different inspection effectiveness tables for different uh, damage mechanisms. And the intent there, so that we can use them in a consistent Bayesian logic for management and metrics, is that an A-level strategy, which may include more than one inspection technique, finds that damage 80 to 100 percent of the time. A B-level strategy, or a usually effective strategy, would find it 60 to 80 percent of the time. A C-level, or fairly effective strategy, would find it 40 to 60 percent of the time, and so forth. You know, hopefully you can see how this would factor into a confidence calculation. How probable is it that we found the damage we were looking for? Now, some of the things I want to stress is it's very important for an organization to be honest with themselves about how they make these gradings. I also want to stress that the examples that are in the 581 document are exactly that. They're examples. They're not meant to be the way you have to do it. It's up, this is really the way you have to do it. And it's up to each organization to decide what that looks like and to be honest with themselves, understanding the benefits and the limitations of the methodologies and of the strategies. Like, for instance, a highly effective inspection for localized corrosion would not just be taking some thickness readings, it might be doing internal exam and visual examination of say 100% of the surface area, just for example, or maybe 80%. Or maybe some organizations have actually come up with statistical methods to nail these down for different scenarios. And they may look a little different for piping than they would for a pressure vessel or for a heat exchanger bundle but it's important for you to stay honest, keep yourselves honest, and keep yourselves consistent. So once you create your own inspection effectiveness tables, and you may start with the API 581 tables as a starting point and go in and adjust those because maybe you don't agree with certain inspection methods. Maybe you're not using those methods. Maybe some of those methods require a high level of expertise to do. And another thing you could do as well is, let's say for instance that you have uh, normally a, a cadre or a stable of technicians you use to say do hick so hick inspection with phased array. Now you're in a turnaround and you need somebody to do that 
and you have somebody that's not, you don't have anybody available that's gone through your qualification demonstration testing program, but they have gone through other ones. Uh, all their certs are in line. They look like they're pretty competent. They've gotten a lot of good recommendations. Well, an option you could have at that point then is to say, well, normally if I had an internally qualified person, I would give that an A level inspection grade. But because I didn't, there's some uncertainty there. Maybe I want to downgrade that to a B. The important thing is that you're honest with yourself, you're consistent, that the teams that you have doing this are consistent in the way they're grading past inspections and strategies and, and grading future inspection strategies. Very important that everybody's on the same page and you understand the basic foundations of what we're trying to do here with risk-based inspection and managing risk and reducing uncertainties and understanding how much uncertainty we're reducing or how much we're improving our confidence about the true damage state of the equipment and the degradation rate of that equipment. Thanks for listening and have a great day.